The aftermarket stereo world is flooded with large screen style systems that debuted originally on Tesla models back in 2012. The question is with so many options, which one do you go with and are any of them any good? Now, should you really buy one of these overseas made large Tesla style stereos for your vehicle? These Android based stereo systems have a ton of features, but are they worth the cost? Well, that's really up to you. I'm hoping to provide you guys with a little bit of insight today on whether I regret purchasing and installing this stereo or not. I've had it for about six months now. I'm gonna give you guys a full review. Are they laggy? Are they reliable? Do they connect to the internet? Does it work with Android Auto, Apple CarPlay? How does it sound? Do the steering wheel controls work? Does the backup camera still work? And how well does it work? Does it need any kind of wiring? These are all a bunch of the questions that you guys asked, and then some. That I'm gonna cover today in this video. This is a six month review of my 12 inch Android Tesla style head unit in my 2015 Silverado Duramax. Last year I bought this Tesla style 12 inch vertical stereo for my 2015 Silverado. Was I hesitant on it? Absolutely. I've read some bad reviews, I've read some good reviews, and I figured there's no other way to figure it out for myself than to just buy it and try it. So I bought it, installed it, here we are, the next year, many, many months later, and I'm gonna let you guys know what I think about it, any problems I had with it, how the install went, and if I would do it again. Let's start with the install. The install was relatively really simple and really straightforward. The install consists of a couple of seven millimeter screws and a couple of clips and you're unplugging things and plugging new things in and popping the new unit in and it is super, super easy. Couldn't be any simpler. Absolutely just plug and play. There was absolutely no cutting and splicing of any wires whatsoever. However, there are a lot of add-ons that require some sort of wiring, some sort of disassembly, running wires, modules, etc. Not to dive too deep into that, but there are a whole bunch of modules that include 360 cameras, front cameras, side cameras, XM radio, extra microphone, a GPS antenna, the upgraded camera wiring, rear entertainment wiring, steering wheel controls, and the list really goes on and on. There's a ton of things you can do with this. I hardly installed any of those things because they just weren't useful to me. This is right around $1,000. Well worth it in my opinion, especially with how terrible the factory system is. This particular unit is from Phoenix Automotive. There are a good many options out there. This is the one I went with because it's more cost effective in my opinion. And for all I know, these are probably all based on the same Android tablet operating system, if not the actual same tablet itself. Now you've got all those things up and you're ready to go, but you wanna to connect to the internet. Does the factory Wi-Fi that you pay for in the truck work with this internet? That I can't tell you, because I never had it in this truck. I wasn't even sure if they still offered it anymore. And the fact basically all I do, if I don't wanna use CarPlay or Android Auto, I don't know why you wouldn't. I just run the hotspot off my phone and you can do anything you want with the tablet. Yes, you can, though don't do it. It works no matter what gear your selector is in. It works perfectly, it doesn't detect that you're moving or anything like that. CarPlay just works so well. No complaints with that at all. But when it comes to Android Auto, I can't tell you, but it's made to work with it. I don't see why it wouldn't work with it. I've got an Apple iPhone, so obviously I use Apple CarPlay and it has worked flawlessly. That includes wireless and wired CarPlay. Now getting them set up, however, 
can be a little bit of a pain. I had to dig through a ton of settings to be able to get wireless CarPlay to work. Now, wired CarPlay that worked relatively simply still had to go through a lot of settings though. It's not necessarily easy, but once it's done, it's done and it works flawlessly. As you can see right now, I've got CarPlay gone with no cable installed, just my phone, and it works incredibly well. To get your wireless CarPlay, probably Android Auto, I'd assume as well to work, you have to connect to the Bluetooth of the tablet, not the Bluetooth of the truck. The Bluetooth of the truck will still be there, even though you've removed the factory radio. So make sure to connect to the Bluetooth of the stereo, the new one, and you should be able to get that to work. It can be a little finicky, but once you get it once, you're good to go. Also under user settings, make sure you have this selected here as a mobile connection and not just charge only. Mine was set as charge only out of the box. So if you don't change that, your Android Auto slash CarPlay will not work. The factory camera worked perfectly with this upgrade and plugged right in. However, I did do a couple of modifications that made a big difference. And they're in this video here. Basically what I did, they make an upgraded HD, I say that in quotation marks, HD reverse camera. It is much improved quality. And what improved the quality just as much is this stereo came with a different wiring harness for the rear camera. So basically it takes the input from the camera, uses a different cable to go into the back of the stereo. It was pretty easy to install. Again, plug and play, I, you just have to remove the glove box. But I go over all that fully in the install video. This camera at night with this new cable looks better than the old camera did with the old cable during the day. That is a massive improvement, I will say. No exaggerations here. My only issue is it doesn't have the lines anymore, and I don't know if I can add that or what. There might be more settings. Yes, I did upgrade the rear camera. Made a big difference, especially when I paired it with the updated wiring harness. Both those were super easy to install. Check out that video. I'll have it linked below. It's also in the Duramax playlist. I thought the lines had gone away, but here for this video, I'm diving into the settings and I found another setting where now the factory lines work with the upgraded camera and new input cable. So that's awesome. Remote start, everything works just like factory. No changes there. Not only does remote start work just like factory, every single factory setting that you did through the old stereo slash radio is still available in the new one. You just go to the home screen, which basically looks like the factory radio, just on this new upgraded screen, and you can go to all the settings that you could before. Works just like factory. You don't lose a thing. No, they do not, but I don't see why you would need them. Now to get wired CarPlay to work, and I believe this is the same for Android Auto, you have to run a USB cable from the new head unit, and I have that run down along the center console if you wanna plug that in. You don't have to do that at all if you just wanna use wireless. Does not use the factory microphone anymore. It has its own built-in microphone to the face of the unit. It also comes with an additional microphone that they say apparently has better quality. I didn't hook mine up because I didn't want to run that wire. The microphone works just fine for me. Lots of people ask about the Bose unit. I have a high country truck. It has the Bose and every option, and this works perfectly with all of that. Now, I don't have a factory sub. I would like to install one, but I don't see why that wouldn't work. Just plugging this in, the volume up and down work perfectly. However, the shuffle or next and previous track buttons on the left side of the steering wheel do not work. However, they do have an additional wiring harness that is plug and play to make that work. I never got around to doing that because it didn't bother me. I will probably do that on the next system if it has it because I think it's worth it. I just didn't get around to it yet. All right, this one wasn't a question, but a quick ad. One quick mention, if you guys are interested in winning a Milwaukee 3 8 high-speed ratchet combo kit, you can purchase anything like this E36 sweatshirt from the website. Every $5 spent gets you an entry to win. This is for United States residents only. It ends the end of April, 2023. I don't sell much merch, so your chances of winning are extremely high.
when it comes to initial install settings, there are a ton of them, and they're actually buried in a tab called Install Set, which has a passcode. Passcode is 666888. And I'll go through some of the basic stuff that you guys will need for your vehicles, and we'll save you some time, hopefully. Another thing I didn't realize is you actually have to have an aux cable plugged in to the factory port like this. If you don't have this plugged in, your sound will not work. And this is just an aux cable with nothing in it. Just plugs right into the factory port and that's it. I struggled with that for a while because I could get the sound to work, but it actually paired to the Bluetooth of the truck, not the Bluetooth of the tablet. So while it technically worked, it didn't really work if that makes sense, but I figured it out eventually. So you have to pick your vehicle, which in my case is a Silverado. Reversing video format, I had to change this because I changed the input on the camera. I'll go over that as well. Steering wheel control, do not change that. If you leave it a protocol, your volume knobs will work. However, the track next and back buttons do not. Now to get good sound of it, you wanna turn basically all of these down, especially the Bluetooth music volume game. If you have this up too high, the sound quality is going to be bad. Same with the aux volume gain. Basically, I just turn all these down and it's gonna sound a lot better. If you have them up, you're gonna get crackles and pops in the sound, which is not good. When you have these down, it sounds just as good as factory. GM screen parameters, this is important. If you don't get this right, your home screen is going to be off to one side or another. Just play around with these buttons until you get it where you need it. And then you can obviously change the colors to whatever you want, white, green, red. This matches the Chevy and GMC. I keep it a green to match. Bluetooth name, make sure you have this selected and paired on your phone. Otherwise, wireless CarPlay will not work. So make sure that's something you remember and you can pair your phone with. Functions of these knobs, you can change all sorts of things. My left knob is volume, my right knob is the temperature change. And really, that's about it. Make sure you hit save and reboot. And then you're also supposed to hold the reset button here with a little pin or something very, very small to get it all to reboot. Happy to say that this video is sponsored by The Ridge. If you wanna say goodbye to bulky wallets, then this is the ad for you. If you're not familiar with Ridge, you clearly don't know wallets. Ridge also makes other accessories like key cases and rings. This wallet here is their forged ash. They remove the cash out of it so you can really kind of see it has a really, really cool design on it. Now what's awesome about these Ridge wallets is they're super slim, but they can still hold up to 12 cards. And on this one, I bolted on an accessory. Yes, this money clip here is actually removable. You undo the screws, you slide it in, and now you have an extra money clip on the front. Super handy and customizable. Like, where else can you customize your wallet? This is a standard wallet, this is a Ridge wallet. There is a massive size difference there. Length, width, and height. This is much better to carry around than this. This goes in the front pocket, it's nice and slim. I've got a bunch of cards in there, but it still stays super slim. And what's cool about the cards is you just push this little tab at the bottom, and the cards come up nice and easily. And as you add more cards, it expands. So it has plenty of capacity. If you'd like to get 10% off your own wallet, you can go to theridge.com forward slash Ross. You get 10% off. These wallets have over 50,000 five-star reviews. They have over 30 different color options. And the Ridge is so confident you'll like it. There's a 99 day return policy. Be sure to check out the link I have in the description. Again, discount code Ross for 10% off. Yeah. sound and everything works really really well with youtube with spotify with carplay all that sound is excellent it's just like factory nothing changes i have the factory bose system in this truck and well it works just like factory the sound quality sounds exactly the same as long as you get the settings right which i went over This was honestly my biggest concern with this unit, it being laggy or slow out of the box or over time getting laggy or slow. I can tell you that it hasn't been slow at all and it hasn't slowed down at all. It has performed perfectly. This hasn't frozen at all. I was actually kind of expecting that because it is based on just a tablet and a kind of an old tablet at that. But this has had zero freezing issues. It has worked perfectly. Holding up perfectly, no issues whatsoever. Hasn't slowed down, hasn't shown any signs of its age. Do I regret buying this at all? Absolutely not. This thing has been pretty much 
perfect for me. It's done everything I've asked of it, and I have no complaints other than it's just a little finicky to get that initial install. Install instructions could be a little bit better as well. I had to watch a couple YouTube videos and just kind of figure things out for myself, but if you just have some common sense and general knowledge of how these tablets and stereos work, you can figure it out just fine. Now, if you'd like to get your own, I have links below. You can get them on the Phoenix Automotive website. They also sell them on eBay. eBay is the link I'll have down below. Now, as always, I have links to everything below in the description box. I have a link to this Phoenix Automotive unit that if you want to check it out, highly recommend it, especially because it's on the cheaper side compared to some other models. Yes, you can. Also, you can just use CarPlay or Android Auto and it does that for you. The climate control system works a few different ways. You can go to the home screen and use it just like factory. You can use the right knob to do different functions. You can click on the different screen that comes up at the bottom, but either way, everything works like factory. The dual climate control still functions normally. Absolutely not. I kept the factory radio and since everything is plug and play, you can simply swap the factory radio back in because I haven't cut any wires. It's that simple. It is an Android tablet, so the apps are really unlimited what you want to do with it, but I did find this interesting. It has a speedometer and an RPM gauge built in. and It also tells you what doors are open, which is pretty cool. Now with all the positive things I've said about this Phoenix Automotive unit, I'm actually swapping it out to test another one. And it's actually a little larger. You'll see that in an upcoming video of the Duramax. It looks a little more modern and it's a more modern tablet as well. Hopefully it works just as well as this one. I think that goes over basically all the questions. I got a lot of questions, but a lot of them were repetitive. The main thing is people asking, how do I like it after five, six, seven months of use? Have I had any issues? No issues at all. The thing has performed flawlessly. I bought this with my own money. This was not sponsored at all, no discounts. And they did not pay me to say anything. This is all just my personal review. It has actually exceeded my expectations. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next video. Probably the next one will be installing the new, larger, more modern head unit.